Today we're going to do the latest in our how-to series of videos and today we're looking at how to change a rubber track on this 1.5 tonne Kubota mini excavator. So why would you need to change a rubber track? Well, generally it's one of two reasons. The one is that the track is actually broken and a track can break in a number of ways, but generally it's that either the links, which is the metal bars that run across the track have actually pulled out from within the track or the track has got thrown off during the course of operation. And why does it get thrown off? Well that bodes another question and that is because the track hasn't been tensioned properly. So it's important at the pre um, any operation that you do make sure your tracks are tensioned properly and we'll show you later in the video how to check that that is correct. If the track is not tensioned properly what can happen is through pressure in operation it will actually ride off the sprocket. Now we're just going to have a quick look at the undercarriage of a machine. So at one end, which is generally regarded as the front end of the excavator, it's easy to spot in this machine because it's got a blade at the front, which smaller machines tend to have, but at the front end of the machine you have what's called the idler, which is just essentially a wheel on a frame that holds the track and guides the track and is also responsible for tensioning the track. On the other end you've got what we call the sprocket which is essentially like a cog and that's attached to the drive motor and that is actually what drives the machine along. You also have rollers in between um, and you have bottom rollers at the bottom obviously and you may have a number of them. In this case this machine's got three of them and on larger machines you also have top rollers and the purpose of those again is to guide and just support the track in the middle and hold it in place. So how do we get into changing a rubber track? Now this machine obviously doesn't need its rubber track changing but we're using it as an example so the track is actually fitted but the first place you look at is you've got a hole on the side or in some cases you may have a plate that needs to be removed and behind that plate is a generally is a grease nipple which has to be removed and that allows the grease to come out because you have a cylinder that runs along the track frame which is pumped up with grease and that tensions the track. So we need to look at what tools we need to be able to change this rubber track. You will need a, a jemmy bar or crowbar of some sort. You will need a ratchet to be able to remove the plate if it's got one and also to release the grease nipple. You'll need a grease gun because when you're retensioning the track you're going to need a grease gun. Now we've got a battery operated one here but you can also have mechanical ones. You'll need some grease. And the final thing is I always find it very useful to actually have a piece of timber and we'll show you how you use this in a few minutes. So the first thing we need to do when we're changing the rubber track is obviously to lift up the machine so that the track is free of the ground. So to do that I'm going to bring the arm of the excavator round to here and then lift the, the machine up. So we've got the machine lifted up off the ground now. Um, we have kept the machine running because we need to maintain oil pressure in the hydraulics because we're using the arm of the digger to actually hold it off the ground. But we have lifted the safety handle in the cab to make sure it's safe while we do it. So the next step is we need to crack off the nut that's got the grease and cylinder on, on the track frame which will allow us to release the grease out the cylinder and the idler will start to slide back. So I'm just going to take our socket and we're using a 22 mil socket in this case, we're just going to crack that off. Um, you don't need to take it all the way out, but we should be able to see once that starts, and I can hear it going now, that that's starting to release some of the grease and the um, track frame starting to come back. And that, what you'll notice is the track in the middle then starts to sag down as you do it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, just to give this a bit of encouragement to come back, because as the machine gets used and you get a build up of dirt and so on within the track frame it can become a bit sort of seized up in there so to do that I'm just going to carefully go and I'm going to drop the safety handle down and I'm facing the front of the machine so it's going to be my left hand lever I'm just going to move the tracks forwards and backwards a little bit and that will just start to take some of the pressure off so I'll just do that a little bit then release the safety handle and come back and have a look I should be able to start to see some grease coming out, which doesn't look like very much is coming out at the minute, so I'm going to keep winding that out a bit further. And I can see now the track is definitely starting to sag down and I can see the, the grease is starting to come out. Now in this case, I can seem to get quite a bit of um, movement out of the track, but I can still see the idler's got quite a bit further to go back. 
So this is where um, my piece of wood comes in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide this into the track frame, just, just close to the sprocket. And then I'm going to carefully just drop my safety handle down and I'm going to track this track backwards. And that will then bring my piece of wood into the track and take it around the sprocket. And that will track all the way around. And as you can see, that has really released the pressure off the track. And my track is now sagging right down. So we just insert the bar on the back here against the sprocket and then Josh is just going to carefully track this round. Um, if you can just bring it backwards, Josh. We'll just um, lever that off and our track is then loose. Just while we've got the track off, I just thought I'd point out, um, these are what we call the track links. So this is the bit that the sprocket drives along um, inside the track. And the way a rubber track is made up, um, you have inside the rubber, you have steel bands that go all the way around, continuously all the way around on each side of this track link. And the, the rubber track is really made up a bit like a sandwich. So you have a balance between rubber that is hard and durable and also soft enough to flex. And generally they put harder rubber on the outside and then they layer it up with softer rubber on the inside to, to give the best of both worlds. So to get the rubber track back on, um, generally we put the track on first on the idler end and then we'll bring it back over and we'll try and hook it on as much as possible onto the sprocket. Now, you want to try and get that um, on as much as possible and close up to the track link as you can so that it's easier to bring it on. So you can see we've now got it up, um, right up close to the sprocket. Now, we're going to use the sprocket to help us drive the track back on. Now, I will just say a little word of caution that you do have to be careful when you do this, that you don't want the sprocket to puncture into the track because you can end up doing damage. However, if you're careful about it, because you've got no pressure on the track, your idler's retracted all the way back, you should be okay to do it. So it's really a case of a repeating what we did before. So I'm going to ask Josh this time to, to, to track it back slowly. And I'm just going to insert my bar into the sprocket. And as he pulls it forward slowly, I'm just going to lever that on. And it can, can take a couple of goes to do this. Here you go. So once this track is on, the next thing we need to do is make sure we tighten up the grease nipple that's in the side. So we'll just wind that all the way back in. Make sure that's tight. Then we'll take our grease gun. So as you can see, we're pumping grease in now to retension the idler. And you can see the track is coming up closer to the under the um, track frame. The, um, the question is how, how tight do you need to get it? Well, we generally recommend that on a machine this size, you want about a thumb's width underneath the, um, the flange of the roller there. Um, on larger machines, you might be want to take it up to 25 millimeters, but that's the kind of tension you need to do. So at the minute, it's still, still a bit slack. Um, just need to bring that up a bit more. So we've now got that to about the right tension. And what you need to be sure of is you don't over tension it. So it's as bad to over tension as it is to under tension, because if you over tension, you're putting too much strain on the track and thereby you can risk breaking the track prematurely. So once you've got your track tensioned up, it's worth just dropping the safety handle down on the machine and then just tracking the track forwards and backwards a little bit. And just make sure the pressure is maintained because occasionally you can have a bit of a um, airlock in the cylinder which it just takes a bit of pressure and movement just to make sure that really has has gone but there you have it the track is now back on again and you're good to go so thanks for watching hopefully that gives you an idea of how to go about changing a rubber track on a mini excavator for more videos like this on how to change your pins and bushes and other interesting guides be sure to check out our youtube channel and like and subscribe here